Welcome back. This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and this video is about a new feature in SimSmith and a question I received a few months ago from a gentleman who wanted to know if the graphs in the ARRL antenna handbook could be plotted in SimSmith. And the graphs he was referring to were in chapter two of the handbook on antenna fundamentals. And what they demonstrate is a 100 foot dipole in free space with different wire diameters, and then they plot the impedance versus frequency. And as the wire diameter gets larger, the impedance variation with frequency becomes less. And this graph right here is just, this is just a larger version of it over here. But what we see is the impedance range varies all over the place. Um, you know, clearly this antenna is a half wave dipole somewhere. It's a one wave dipole. It's various other links out of the frequencies, but they plotted the frequency um, the impedance from 1 to 32 megahertz. And this is the graph you get. And I thought about it for a few minutes, and I did not think Sim Smith could do this. I went and I asked Ward later, and he agreed with me. But as soon as I asked him, he also decided that maybe Sim Smith ought to be able to do this. So he put this new feature in Sim Smith. So this is a little bit of a story about that. And it's also kind of a humbling story because in the, along the way, I learned something I never really knew that I didn't know before. And it's something that's kind of obvious. Here we have a SimSmith file that contains multiple circuits. The first circuit is the impedance of a 100 foot dipole in free space that is made with wire that's 0 0.01 inches in diameter, which is the same as 30 gauge wire. The second one is the same, is the same dipole, but the wire diameter has been changed to 0 0.1 inch or 10 gauge wire. The next one is one inch diameter wire and the last one's 10 inch diameter wire. And each of these we can look at simultaneously. The first one let's look at is the, is the 30 gauge wire or the 0 0.01 inch diameter wire. And there's our impedance range. We get from, I plotted these from 1.7 to 30 megahertz, not 1 to 32 like the ARRL did, but the graphs are extremely close. And the next one is the 10 gauge wire. The next one is the one inch diameter wire. And the next one is the 10 inch wire. They all look different but yet they're all kind of the same and there's not a lot you can determine it's hard to believe that the 10 the, the orange one here which is a 10 the uh, 10 inch diameter wire is has a much lower impedance range than the other one it doesn't really look like it on the smith chart that much i made a comment i'm to uh, ward and he added this feature to sim smith and it's really kind of nice uh, let's go down and look at it the sim smith manual i'm looking at uh, is for this current version and there's a new block at the end called plotting on a canvas and there's the format right there there are two canvases available xy1 and xy2 and they have an x-axis a y-axis a center point scale factors um, and you'll get you'll see those just in a moment but they're, it's pretty easy to use so if we take the plot window here i declared a canvas to be xy1 and let's go over here and look. We, we access this through the square chart. So here's, here's the graph. From the square chart, we see that the, the x-axis is labeled R. There it is. It's a log format. We can see it's log. It runs 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. Now, this is the same range the ARL antenna book did, but they had a different number of segments in between. So it does... It, the numbers aren't quite the same, but they, they, they really are the same, just this number of uh, divisions is different. Then I plotted five different things. I plotted, the first one is the blue one that's shown, which is the 0 .0, 0 0.01 inch diameter wire. The second one that's shown is the 0 0.1 inch diameter or 10 gauge wire. And it's got a, it's got a, um, a marker on it just to show where um, 14 megahertz was. The third one is the one inch diameter wire. The last one is a 10 inch diameter wire. And from these, with the same scale factor, we see that the, um, the orange one, which is the 10 inch diameter wire, really has a much narrower, narrower range of impedances than the one that was with the 30 gauge wire or the 0 0.01 inch wire. And if we, just to show that this really did work nicely, let's bring that other graph back here and compare the two. They show a mark at 9 megahertz here. Let's go up to 9 megahertz. That's pretty close. 
it's right about at the same place down here at 10 megahertz it's about the same place 30 megahertz is right there that matches this one um yeah it's the same graph if we look at this graph we can look and see very quickly i'll move this one away again that this impedance goes up to about maybe two point well we can get it exactly two point uh three k ohms inductive and down to 2.7 k ohms capacitive the maximum resistive piece of the impedance is 5k and at 3 megahertz it looks like 31 minus j467 so this is a really interesting way to look at impedance because this shows the the changes much much better than in in my opinion than the sims than than the smith chart does in sim smith and it's not just sim smith doing this it's the smith chart in general smith chart in general is really really nice but um there's some problems of course when you look at high impedances and stuff they all get compressed in, in one place the super low impedances get compressed in one place and sometimes you you want to look at that and you, and you can't just for completeness while we're here um there's another way to look at um it's another way to look at impedance if you really want to. Let's just look at um, LG1, say. And we can go over here and click on the SWR. And here we see it. What we see is we see the dashed line is the resistive piece of the impedance versus frequency. The dotted line is the reactive piece, and we see it go below zero, of course. And the solid line is the magnitude of the total impedance. If this is something that happens to resonate with you um, more than one of these other graphs, well, you know, that's fine. What it means is um, there's just three, now another way to look at impedance. So you can look at impedance this way. If that, if that, you know, if you get more out of it, that's fine. We can look at it this way. If you get more out of it, that's fine. And finally, we can look at it close this other one off we can look at it like like that if that tells you more one of the really useful features of the smith chart is to show swr swrs that are constant plot as circles on a smith chart here i've built a little circuit that the swr sets the resistance value here lossless piece of transmission line i made it 48 feet long velocity factor one loss of zero it turns out 10.245 10 megahertz is 48 feet for a half wavelength. And I can change SWR. We can see the, see the plot move, move around. And we notice that for every six feet of transmission line length, we rotate the same amount around the Smith chart. And the resulting plot is a circle, as I said. Now, let's look at what happens if I plot this on a linear XY plot. Let's go over here for a moment. I'm going to plot it just like I plotted before, except the, log, the scale on the X axis will not be log. It'll be linear, and the Y axis will be linear also. I'll go over here, and I'll plot it. And lo and behold, it's a circle. I would never, ever have thought that that would have been a circle. It's just, it's absolutely amazing to me that that's a circle. And I, I believe it now, but when I first saw it, I thought... Sim Smith made a mistake, and then I checked it, and sure enough, it was not a mistake, and son of a gun, I had never realized that this would be a circle. Anyways, um, it is a circle, but notice that six feet of transmission line has a lot lar larger arc swing than, than it does over here. It's just, it's not linear, but the circle is still, still a circle. That means everything inside this circle has an SWR of five to one or less, and we can see that that goes out to 250 ohms. It goes down here to somewhere in the order of uh, 120 minus J120, 120 plus J120, and over here it's 10 ohms. This, this is kind of interesting. So then I thought, well, okay, that's nice. What happens now if we change this circuit a little bit and not be a circle that's centered in the middle of the Smith chart, but say centered over on the side or centered somewhere else? Okay, so here we have a shunt series LC 
and a resistor to, to tame the uh, impedance so it doesn't go like to zero. And with 50 ohms here and these component values, and we sweep from say four to 20 megahertz, we get a circle that looks like this. If, it's, if there's some segmentation here, I just didn't uh, include enough uh, segments uh, to make it be smooth. But this is a circle. Let's look at what it looks like on a linear XY plot. It looks like a circle again. Son of a gun. So you might say, well, gee, that's on, the, that's on this side. What about if we have look at the other side? Here we have a circle on this side of the Smith chart. I plot it. Yet a circle again. So it appears to be that any circle on a Smith chart will plot as a circle on a linear XY impedance plot. I found that to be absolutely amazing. It was kind of humbling, but nevertheless, um, you know, it's a good day when you learn something new that you didn't know that you didn't even know.